Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Wixon. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and share with you my experience with co the creation of a knowledge graph for the healthcare industry. In full disclosure, unlike many of the accomplished data scientists who are, that are here today, I'm merely a practicing vascular surgeon. Next slide. <clears throat> I've been in practice for approximately 20 years, and during that time, I've had the good fortune of caring for numerous patients with both life and limb-threatening problem. It's truly gratifying work. I say this as I want to emphasize the magnitude of the decision that I made approximately four years ago. I, was going to, I contemplated quitting the practice of medicine. Next slide. Like many other physicians around the country, I was tired and angry. It was a classic case of burnout. Next slide. But before quitting, I asked myself the obvious questions. Why was I so unhappy? After all, I had amazing tools at my disposal, tools that allowed me to diagnose problems at an early stage and then treat those problems with increasingly minimally invasive techniques. Next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, the electronic health record is not one of those tools. At first, it seemed practical. Who would argue with a process that advocated legible documentation, electronic information sharing, and aggregate decision support? But soon after the next slide. But soon after implementation came the unintended consequences. As it turns out, electronic data entry is loathsome, soul-crushing work. It causes disruption to the patient-physician interaction and is the proximate cause of widespread physician dissatisfaction. All the while, the promise of improved outcomes and reduced health care costs have remained elusive. Ironically, it was my discontent with the current system that allowed me to pursue the solution that you'll hear, to, hear about today. Next slide. Early on, I spent time developing customized templates that fit the new electronic format. Next slide. But no matter how much time I spent, the system remained confusing, inefficient, and failed to adequately capture the essence of the patient's illness. I didn't realize it at the time, but these provided the, my formative lessons in data modeling. Now, now, before I get too far down on the electronic health record vendors, I'd like to say it's not necessarily their fault. As Henry Ford once fa famously said, if I'd asked people what they had wanted, they would have asked for ha faster horses. Similarly, in an effort not to disrupt the physician workflows, designers of current systems mimicked workflows around traditional paper medical records. That is to say, they were designed to simply be faster horses. It's precisely what the medical industry asked for, but not what they needed. I thought there must be a better way. Here's the key concept. You can next slide. Here's the key concept. Rather than documenting a patient history which contained a variety of data points, why not create data points which accurately reflected the patient's history? For me, this was an epiphany. Next slide. Now, it's true that healthcare data are complex. They exist in multiple locations. They're structured and unstructured. They have in inconsistent definitions and are constantly changing due to uh, regulatory bodies. Next slide. Here are a few of the most commonly used terminology system by the healthcare industry. Such, si such systems are integral to health informatic systems as they support the representation of detailed clinical concepts in a computable manner. But on their own, the terminology does nothing. They are only a single component needed for the solution for an effective medical record. To benefit from a terminology, it must be implemented and used as part of an integral part of the application. Next slide. So what if we did just that? What if we used the patient's problem as the core of our system? We could, if we could pre-coordinate medical knowledge in a clinically relevant manner, we could then enable documentation through a process of simply semantically navigating the graph. Next slide. I spent a lot of time on the whiteboard developing convoluted models that look something like this. Honestly, I was lost in the data and it was pretty messy stuff. I had to remind myself that the graph was being built to accomplish a particular case, in my case, to document a medical history. As such, the underlying schema needed to be purpose-driven to facilitate usability. It also needed to deliver consistency and efficiency to the user. Next slide. After spending a great deal of time on the problem, what emerged was a concept model or a meta model that, is, that represented clinical concepts in a universal and economical manner. The key concept here is the use of attribute, attribute nodes which correspond to various components of the electric, electronic health record. As such, and as such, serve as a pointer function to tell the system how a particular resource should be used in a particular medical application. 
While the model appears to be relatively simple, we have found it to be incredibly expressive. Next slide. I think the best way to show the model is, dem is demonstrated through an example which demonstrates the relationships between clinical concepts. Let's say we wish to associate a medical diagnosis, say carpal tunnel syndrome, with a, with a concept called hand weakness. We first create a direct relationship between the two nodes, and then we use the attribute symptom, which describes the relationship between the concepts. I should note that since all resource nodes in the model are bound by the SNOMED ontology, all superclass concepts are inherited by the resource node. We can talk about this later if anybody's interested in this. Next slide. Another thing that I really like about the model is it, as it permits nodes that do not contain explicit content, but rather allow the graph to recommend data to the user that's not explicitly entailed. For example, as part of a patient plan for the same diagnosis, carpal tunnel syndrome, the physician wishes to make a referral to an orthopedic surgeon. Instead of creating explicit relationships between the tens of thousands of orthopedic surgeons, we're able to launch a node which references an APOC spatial query to locate all the physicians with the label orthopedic surgeon and having the criteria of sharing the location with the user. Obviously, the next step would be to include provider networks as part of the recommendation engine. Also, since this data that is captured is fully structured, we can delegate the responsibility of processing the patient referral to the computer. We can do the same thing with prescription medicine, scheduled tests, and procedure. By making, by making use of the APOC spatial query, we can look for pharmacies, testing centers, hospitals, which share a geolocation with the, with the patient. Next slide. Oh, let's go to the next slide. Before we get too far into examples of the graft in action, I want to try and spend a very brief moment to discuss ranking functions because it's important when you're creating a knowledge graft. It's something we actually hadn't thought of when we first developed the graft. Imagine we use the graph to perform a faceted search on the terms metacarpal fracture. Next slide. Obviously, if alphabetical order does not make sense to the user, index being the first term on the, on the, uh, on the re returned uh, payload really doesn't make sense. So sibling concept nodes need to be presented in a contextually orderly manner, and in the healthcare sector, concepts are more likely to be ranked by size, severity, anatomic site, or perhaps frequency of use. This is something that a domain expert will need to provide when curating the graft. Next slide. So even if we can represent concepts in a clinically relevant, economical, and orderly manner, the obvious questions arise. Can we truly map the entire human condition? And if that's possible, would the model be too complex to be useful? Next slide. Obviously, to build such a tool, you're going to need a domain expert, and in the healthcare industry, you're going to need a team of them. The challenge is that these people tend to be in short supply, and they tend to be very busy people. Next slide. So where are we today? Today we built a graph that contains approximately 1.5 million clinical concepts, and those clinical concepts are connected by about 5 million uh, relationships. The graph contains the bulk of information for the fields of general medicine, cardiovascular medicine, orthopedics, neurology, renal medicine, and soft tissue. And we're, spanning the and we're expanding the graph nearly every day. Next slide. One of the things I think is really great about a knowledge graph is that it provides means for an expert physician like the gray-haired physician in the upper left-hand corner to transfer knowledge to a less experienced user. Often that's the case in medicine. A doctor may see a patient that does not fall strictly within their domain. The data encoded in the graph can assist the user by providing lists of potentially appropriate diagnostic, diagnostic or therapeutic decisions. Next slide. Okay, so we finally arrive at the fun part of the talk. I brought a couple of examples to show you how this might work. Um, let's say the user is an orthopedic surgeon and he's away from his office. Perhaps he's in the operating room. And for billing purposes, he needs a diagnosis code associated with a broken leg. You might be surprised to learn that there are approximately 3,000 ICD-10 codes associated with this injury. One method is to go to a reference book that looks a lot like the yellow pages um, and, uh, and look the code up. It's a tedious process. And if you hit the click button, I'll show you how this works. For, for this use case, we designed a smartphone application around the data contained in the graph. The data would first choose a patient and then drive through the decision tree in order to get to the appropriate code. It's hard to see in this particular potential thing, but um, they just drill through the code using very short numbers of nodes to choose from in order to get to an actionable node associated with a particular entity. And there you have it. <clears throat> now, 
To provide context to the user, previously selected nodes remain visible on the interface, and since the por this portion of the graph is arranged in an acyclic manner, if the user finds himself down the wrong branch of the tree, it's easy to go back up and explore a, a different branch without getting lost. As an alternative, the app also supports a faceted keyword search method. Next is a very preliminary iteration which d demonstrates how a user would interact with the graph to document an entire patient visit. We purposely tried to create an efficient user interface that is devoid of extraneous information. Context should come from the data itself, not from the interface. As I noted earlier, the meta model of attributes corresponds to typical components of the physician encounter, such as history of present illness, physical examination, review of systems, and plan. Each of those have children with, which correspond to items in column one, as you see on the left. If you hit play now. So I'll show you how you can go. This is a particular, the diagnosis that you see in the blue bar on the top is a, a diagnosis of carotid stenosis. So when we ask the user to document, oh, so it's just showing the different categories throughout the uh, electronic health record. And if we go back to history of pre present illness and we ask what particular symptoms, it will start delivering disease specific symptoms to the user and they can they can document whether there is a whether that symptom is there in the affirmative or the neg or the negative the idea is to allow the system to participate in the medical history taking at the point of service and without being mentally distracting to the user in the bottom pane it's hard to see there um, you can see the history is documented concurrent to the navigation. And next slide. Upon completion, the system generates both human and machine representations of the data, and the encounter is immediately interoperable via a fire compliant API. One more click. Another benefit of the graph is that it can be used to store the clinical information that was captured. Storing the information in a graph format would enable the array of graph algorithms to look for unrecognized patterns which exist in the data. Perhaps in next year's meeting, I'll be able to bring that back to show that to you. And next slide. I'd like to conclude by stating that I was fortunate enough to have emerged from burnout before throwing in the towel. Unfortunately, we continue to lose a number of good physicians due to this process. And if we truly hope to modernize our healthcare system through improved outcomes and reduced costs, we must acknowledge that healthcare is a data dependent industry. Things like machine learning and value based healthcare will depend on concepts being represented in a reliable, a complete, and a computable format. Last slide. Perhaps a medical knowledge graph can provide the necessary panacea. A knowledge graph offers significant advantages over traditional symptoms, one of which is not listed there, is the speed at which the transactions occur. Latency is a very annoying process as you're going through an electric, electronic health record. The time between clicks and the, the, uh, the graph database is probably the fastest platform out there. In addition, it offers the graph, allow, the graph participates in the medical encounter and keeps the user focused at the problem at hand. It enables the use of lightweight devices such as, such as a tablet at the point of service. It enables less experienced clinicians to function at the top of their credentials. It provides a method of storing clinical information suitable for pattern recognition algorithms, and it can facilitate the delegation of, ta the delegation of tasks to the computer, such as scheduling and prescribing. And the last slide. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions in the, in the uh, corridor afterward. Thank you.